Okay. Well, you'll hear something already, uh, meaning uh, it's a small sequence from the iPad. But uh, there's some other stuff here, which um, I will show you in this video. And I will especially show you how to connect all this. Because the TR606 is a dancing device and, uh, well, basically the RK6 can trigger it all, but how to achieve all this. But first, um, what we have is uh, a dancing to two times mini jack cable which you can plug into the sync input of the 606 you set the switch to be input and now these two plugs here they contain or they need the clock signal for dance sync and the other one needs the start stop signal and we can generate it from the rk 6 well how we have a settings app where you can see all the um, outputs of the rk6 and operation, filters, and uh, you can store some stuff. Anyway, um, here's the output one, that's this one here, and it's set to MIDI. And I want to generate those signals for dancing, so how do I do that? I'll set this to gate first, I'll set it to be triggered by the tempo clock, and I don't want it gated by run stop, I want this clock always sent to the 606, so um, clock divider is for um, yeah, like if you want to play stuff in half tempo. What we also need is the run stop signal, which is basically a five volt pulse, which is on for running and off for stopping. And we can make that on port two. We'll also set that to gate mode and we won't trigger it by tempo clock, but we'll trigger it by run stop. And you can type or you can select what kind of type of run stop you want. I want it positive like I said before, and I want it latched, which means that once the MIDI sequencer starts, the voltage will stay at five, and when I stop the MIDI sequencer, the voltage will go down. The other option is pulse, which means a short pulse for toggling, toggling on, toggling off, but that's not what we need on DenSync. We'll keep it like this. So now I'll go back to ModStep. I'll connect the red one to the clock, and the black one to or two which is the start stop and now when i press play on um, mod step you'll also hear the 606 playing along but we can do other creative stuff when we now have a potential nine gate out modes and uh, some other midi tricks on the rk6 um, i'll connect the launch key mini to the input not the RK6. I can use just a normal stereo cable because both of these are MIDI standard TRS-A. And there it goes in. What I'll do now is I'll make an extra track here and I'll set it to respond to all inputs. And I'll set it to send out to port number three. Here you can see all the ports available on the RK6. You can go from uh, one MIDI into every output, which is like a through box, but you can also access them individually. Out number three is the one. I'll arm it so the MIDI in goes through to the MIDI out. This is something you need to do in a DAW situation, but on standalone, the RK6 will do it by itself. This is called the soft through settings. Now, when I press something, you'll see that on port three, there's MIDI coming out. But now I'll change this from MIDI also to a gate. I take output three, set it to gate mode, and I'll set it to respond to individual keys. Note number 36 plus output, which means number 36 is this one, which would trigger output port one, output port two, three, four, five, six, seven, blah, blah. Okay. Um, oh yeah, there's another thing. Of course, I want it to be effective not only on run stop of the sequencer, I want it to be always active. And the latch means we want to have it high on note down and low on note off. See, like this. So now I'll go back to mod step and I'll see when I play port three, one, two, three here. Yeah, a pulse comes out on number three. This is, just a, this is a solid pulse, but because of the refresh rate on my camera, it looks like it's pulsating, but it's just on, off, on, off. So now 
I can replace the start stop signal by MIDI start stop and make it happen by this little key here. So now when I play my little sequence again, the 606 won't start. But when I press this key, I can manually start the 606. And when I release it, it stops again. So I hope you notice now as well that I can just program a start stop track on my sequencer. Like, uh, and it also shows the reason why we didn't use C4, C3, but a note number. It might look technical, but like Modstep is using C minus two as a start, and other programs are using C0. So now we just count up to note number 36, 7, 8, which would be D1. Oh, it's already active. So now I can, for example, have the 606 play around in half time of the track. It now starts and stops halfway. I can trigger it again a few times. So I can even uh, like automatically stop it again when I choose another track. And together with the tempo modifier, I can change. The, I can change the tempo uh, of the six or six playing along. Along, it now sends a MIDI dancing clock, but I can also go like half tempo. So now this clock output is half the MIDI tempo. So when I start the six or six again, it will play along in half time. I can best show this again by plugging it back back to uh, normal MIDI start stop clock. So I could also have it play along with uh, like a strange uh, two thirds uh, thing. I don't know. Set it to seventy two. There. And now it will play back in sort of a three third uh, tempo. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, all right. Well, or uh, double it up. Anyway, um, you can see uh, with the combination of uh, smart plugging and filtering and modifying, you can really integrate dancing machines with MIDI stuff quite easily and um, very flexible as well. Um, RK006 in the house.